אנחנו מתחילים במושב השני ואנחנו הולכים לפי הסדר של המוטו של הוועידה הזאת אז אם דיברנו על למה הטיפול במצב הוא הכרחי עכשיו נדבר על עד כמה הוא אפשרי אני שמח להזמין את ויקטור וייס מנכ״ל מרכז השל לקיימות לעמוד בראש המושב הזה ויקטור בבקשה אז כמו שנאמר, המושב הקודם עסק בשאלה למה, למה חשוב לעסוק בנושא והמושב הזה, האתגר שלו היא להתמודד, איך אפשר להתמודד עם הנושא. ושם קבלת השראה, איך אפשר להציב יעדים שאפתניים ולהוביל שינוי משמעותי, אנחנו יחד עם השגרירות הגרמנית הזמנו את כריסטוף זיס, את כריסטוף זיס, מומחה מגרמניה במכון ווופרטל שהיה ראש הצוות המדעי שליווה את תהליך לבניית התוכנית הלאומית של ממשלת גרמניה להתמודדות עם שינויי אקלים 2025. את הביקור שלו פתחנו במפגש משותף עם צוות משרד האנרגיה וצוות מהמשרד הגנת הסביבה אתמול, שהיה מפגש פורה ומעניין ומעורר השראה, והיום בבוקר יחד איתו ערכנו סדנת למידה בשיתוף עם אוניברסיטת תל אביב פורטר לבעלי עניין גם ממשרדי הממשלה וגם מארגונים וגופים אחרים והיום ועכשיו אני מתכבד להזמין את כריסטופר זיס להציג בפניכם בקצרה זייס צייס סליחה על המבטא אני מתכבד להזמין את כריסטופר צייס להציג את התהליך לגיבוש התוכנית הלאומית של ממשלת גרמניה להתמודדות עם שינויי אקלים 2025. תודה רבה. And uh, hello, I'm very glad to be here and to talk about the participation process um, as a success, a success factor in German climate politics. Um, I will immediately start in my presentation. Um, I try to immediately start in my presentation. Yeah. Um, to give you a very short overview of the German situation today. Um, to, uh, to get some uh, framework for you to work uh, as I explain our participatory process. Um, Germany is densely populated, we have a temperate and marine climate, so we need to heat very much in the winter time, so buildings, isolation and heating is a very important uh, topic for us. Our uh, electricity production today is based to a third on renewables, but we still have lignite, hard coal, nuclear energy and natural gas. Nuclear energy will phase out in the next years. Um, so uh, uh, we have a changing electricity system from this point of view also. Uh, we do have mitigation targets since 2010. Um, reduction of the GAG emissions to 2020 by 40 percent and to 2050 by at least 80 percent. And these uh, targets are um, the targets of, the Germ of all German governments since 2010 and um, are the base of all our uh, building up our renewable energies, our uh, efficiency uh, strategies and so on. Um, on the other side you see our prim primary energy consumption where you see not all the world is electricity, but it is heat and it's petroleum. We do have a lot of um, uh, transportation issues in Germany, especially from uh, lorries. Uh, we are in the middle of Europe and uh, got a lot of um, driving through um, traffic. So, uh, it's a little bit different than in Israel. We do have targets, but we are struggling to bring the measures down to earth to bring them in the politics and to reduce our CO2 emissions. Uh, we have a target to 2020. We won't reach as is now this target, mostly uh, because our lignite coal plants are still running at uh, nearly full capacity and uh, exporting their electricity to whole Europe. Even 
if, uh, if we are, um, had a lot of more renewable energies and a uh, steep increase, um, we do uh, have a lot of CO2 emissions. Um, but the question for our long-term goals, for our climate protection plan 2050 on the national level was to aim at the time 230 with a view to 2050. Why? We, need, we have goals in Germany, we have goals in the European Union for GAG emissions for 2050 and we have infrastructure which is built up and uh, a coal plant runs 40 years, 50 years, sometimes 60 years. So what we do today decides our energy structure, decides our GAG emissions even in 2050. So we have to, uh, have, to have ideas, uh, measures and um, strategies for 2050. And um, the German government decided that um, the measures aiming at 2030 to 2050, which are part of a climate protection plan, will be developed with a huge stakeholder process. And I will go, go deep into the stakeholder process, uh, the participants and the um, framework and our methodology, so you can see what, what kind of work we did uh, to try to reach these, um, these measures. A little bit of background. Um, the governing coalition um, announced a climate action plan in 2030. They announced they want to have a climate action plan in the light of Paris. So our time frame was be, uh, between uh, the Paris Agreement and the next election in Germany to produce climate action measures with stakeholders. It's a very short time for particip participation progress. Um, the climate action plan itself contains more than just measures, it contains strategies, scenarios. The, this was not a part of the participatory process, but about the climate action measures. And this was the first participatory process on nas national level. This is a new kind of uh, influencing political processes through, uh, from stakeholders. And I will show you how it happened. Um, who were the stakeholders? We had all 16 federal states in Germany. Germany is a federal state. Uh, uh, they have a very strong position in finance and in politics. We got 60 selected municipalities. We have more than 1,000 municipalities in Germany, but we selected uh, municipalities uh, to represent the wide range of different municipalities from rural areas, uh, big cities, um, very uh, forerunners in climate uh, mitigation um, and uh, says they're leftovers. Uh, we had 155 associations, the trade uh, environmental associations, civil society, uh, non-profit organizations, uh, the churches, um, uh, the, everybody, every, every association who had a claim in this topic could be part of the process. And we invited nearly 500 citizens to, uh, uh, to bring us um, uh, climate uh, protection measures to promote them. So, huge process. Um, why? Why did we took this very long and uh, uh, road to get climate action measures? Uh, I'm from Wuppertal Institute. We're doing science since uh, climate protection science since 25 years. We could uh, made a lot of a lot of good measures, but. Um, we see that we are transformation our society from today to 2050. It is a transformation not only of the electricity system, but of lifestyle, of our way of living. What will we eat? How will we drive? So um, it is important to have a strategy which is, goes over one parliamental uh, time. What, what, is, uh, what has a, uh, an overview? The next election should not um, stop this strategy. So this was an important point um, uh, to introduce as much as stakeholders as possible. Um, in Germany, we think that the, uh, we use the usual tools uh, for bringing political ideas in, in the political uh, area is a little bit outdated. So there's a feeling of a need of a 
brighter participatory processes in the whole of Germany in all, all, in all areas. Um, and we try to bring out, uh, in stakeholders which are not usually heard in those processes. The associations of the industry are very um, good heard in the politics. They are there, that's their, that's their job, even the, also the NGOs. But what about the citizens? What about um, uh, single municipalities? Um, these are uh, new voices in the creating of um, measurements, so this was the aim to bring it in. So, this is the normal way how we um, s uh, make particip participatory processes with stakeholders uh, in politic plans. First, there's science. There's some, uh, somebody is making a, a scenario, somebody is uh, doing some, uh, uh, try to get some measures together. Um, then uh, these um, science-based studies were, uh, are discussed with stakeholders. Then there are recommendations. And then the state government, uh, um, this time the uh, national government, decide what kind of measures are implemented. This is, this is the usual, usual thing. We tried something new, not for the first time, but for the second and third time in Germany, because uh, we had an opportunity to learn from a, a former process in Northern Westphalia. Um, there is, uh, we want an iterative process. We want to start on a white sheet of paper. We want to get um, uh, ideas from the stakeholders, and we want to discuss it under uh, um, scientific guidance with the stakeholders and bring the stakeholders to discuss it between themselves to uh, get a, uh, uh, to better the, me uh, the measures and um, the roles in this process for the state government is only the observer and the sponsor. The money comes from, uh, from the government, the national action plan, it was the environmental ministry and they were present through whole of the process, but they had no role. They were not the, in the discussion part. Um, the, um, the role of the moderation, the role of, uh, um, of bringing the people together and discuss, uh, discussing with them uh, were partly from science, from Wuppertal Institute in this part, and also from um, agency uh, working on participatory processes called EFOC. This part, but um, uh, the main thing is to involve scientific ideas and scientific um, arguments in this discussion. The main point, therefore, is um, if you have a, uh, in, in a political association, they have their position papers, and if you if you want to hear something from from them, then they are presenting their position papers. Even the, also the NGOs. But uh, if you want to have a science-based discussion, if you have a fact-based discussion, you have uh, to bring them down to a fact base. So you ask, interesting opinion, where's the study behind it? Where's the argumentation behind it? And if there's a study, if it's, uh, if it's based on, on, on science, then you could bring it into the progress and discuss them. But sometimes such opinions are more political than fact-based. Maybe you know it in Israel too, and uh, this is a possibility to uh, get more uh, to the to the, um, the concrete, uh, concrete measures, for example. And the uh, uh, stakeholders, their role is propose and discuss matters, measures. So they bring us measures. We work with the measures. I will tell you uh, shortly how, and they discuss them. So. This is a picture of, uh, of the process. Um, I only highlight some points. We started with the kickoff conference in the middle of 2015 to present the process, to invite all stakeholders to start the process. We had, you see, um, uh, panels with federal states, municipalities and association panels, um, where we try to get uh, um, measures from the stakeholders. Um, we, uh, we um, had sexual working groups in between where the experts, for example, for transportation from federal state panels, municipalities and association uh, get together and talked about the measures from transportation. And um, 
after another um, uh, another overwork of the uh, of the measures, they came back in this uh, federal state panel, municipality and association panels, and. Uh, parallel, therefore, there was a public participation with nearly 500 people uh, who recommended measures and uh, um, uh, had an election of 12 representatives uh, which uh, um, get into, into an advisory committee with uh, spent the whole time of the process, not only, but only this time. So, so this is how we created the measures and then we got the participatory results. There were recommendation measures, uh, recommendations, and this went into the, into the political process. Then the different ministries talked about the climate action plan, talked about the measures, and decided which kind of measure would be in, uh, included. And after all, we, uh, we did a final conference with all stakeholders and the representatives of the uh, citizens um, to bind, bind it up. So what is a climate action measure? In a participatory process, you have to define it very clearly to the beginning, what kind of measure do you want? And in this kind, and, uh, in this process, um, we needed a measure with, which enables or provides a key contribution for the implementation of the transformative mitigation path, 2030. You can promote renewable energy, this has a direct GAG emission uh, impact, but for example, you also need to uh, enable the grid to, get, uh, to use, you have to flexibilize the grid, so also, also these are relevant measures. Um, the stakeholders has to, has to find concrete instruments, not what should be done, but what law, what financial scheme, what, uh, uh, what uh, research uh, field should be uh, financed. So that we um, uh, so that we discuss not what should be done, but what should be directly done. What should our government do in the next years to set a base for climate mitigation uh, in 2030 to 2050? Um, I brought you some some examples from it. One example is uh, shaping the framework for the further development of power to X and storage technologies. Um, we see if we have a fully renewable energy system in 2050, then we have to have different kind of technologies in our energy uh, industry. We have to change the way cement uh, is produced in Germany. We have to change the way um, uh, how our chemical industry is working. Um, and um, therefore, we need a framework for research and development. Um, we need money from the government to start, also money from the industry, to start uh, research on these topics, to bring up first uh, plans, first uh, working um, work plans on, uh, on the market, to have these technologies available in 2050. We do not know if these technologies are economically viable in 2050, but we do know if we do it not today, then we won't have, it, have them in 2050. So um, this was a measure which was recommended from all stakeholders, all, from municipalities, from, uh, from uh, business associations, from the NGOs, all. So this is a uh, very interesting thing and uh, this is uh, something which found its way in the climate action plan of the national uh, uh, government. Then we have the phase out production of electricity from coal fired plants. This was not viable to bring, uh, uh, the idea is we do have a lot of electricity from renewables but we still have a lot of lignite plants. This is one of the main points of strife in Germany and uh, the discussions about a new government. Nothing you could uh, really solve in this environment of a particip uh, participatory process. So the measure was there but was not um, brought into, uh, into the climate action plan. Another thing, cross-linking campaigns on energy efficiency and energy saving. We do have a lot of uh, campaigns on energy saving, but we have campaigns on the national level, on the federal level, on the municipality level. We have campaigns uh, going from 
very different. Nobody knows all campaigns, nobody knows all money going into it. So there was a need to unify it. And this was also recommended by all, all uh, participants. Um, another example is expansion of bicycle traffic, improvement of traffic regulation. Um, uh, uh, bicycle traffic is not only uh, about um, uh, the place for bicycles, but also for the feel of the uh, security. So, it's uh, speed limit, for example, is an important thing. Um, another one is taxation reform of company car schemes. In Germany, 60% of our automobile cars are bought from companies, but most of them are additionally used private. So there's no incentive to buy uh, efficient cars. And uh, this is a problem, but it's also a very uh, distinct point because Germany relies heavily on jobs f uh, and the economy of the car manufacturers. So this was a very diverse uh, discussed measure. And the last one, this is one uh, brought by the citizens. As an example, what view is able, uh, what can citizens uh, contribute? Um, this is control measures for the reduction of li livestock. We do have a lot of animals, animal production in Germany, and we do know that eating, uh, that uh, uh, producing meat um, produces GAG emissions. So uh, the citizens decided they want to um, promote, uh, uh, for example, taxation of factory farming and act a law to ban mass animal husbandry. This is nothing. Uh, uh, our government could put, uh, could, uh, put into the climate action plan, but it was possible to hear the citizens, a lot of the citizens wanted to change our agriculture uh, uh, and uh, reduction of livestock. So this is a possibility to, to be heard, even if it's not recommended by the majority of the stakeholders. So two minutes left. Um, we got 97 climate measures on all greenhouse gas related sectors. Um, we got also specific information on consequences of implementing the measures. Because if there was a measure in the process, all stakeholders could say what was their problem with, uh, uh, with this measure. What should be, um, uh, how should the measure uh, should be changed or what is the problem to implement the measure and we documented it. If there was an uh, effect behind it, we documented it. So, uh, and, uh, describing of the measures, all the reservations, all the problems of the uh, stakeholders are also documented. And this is very, very um, important for the government because this is, uh, they see with one view, this is the measure, and these are the uh, stakeholders. What are, are they saying about this one measure? So, it's very interesting. Lessons learned. First, such participatory processes, they, they need a clear framework for, from the government. The government has to say, in our, uh, in our view, what is the target of the participatory process and what will happen with the recommendation. Um, and there must be n enough time for it. Uh, it is a process which uh, tries to uh, bring stakeholders to interact with each other. So you have to have time to build up a trust and you have to be flexible, because uh, I never started a participatory process with the same frame uh, as it ended. Because every time some stakeholder said, we need another kind of, uh, of measure, we need another kind of instrument. And if it's possible, we try to implement them, and this helps the process. Um, and very important, the scientific expertise is very important, because not only in the discussion, but also in the describing the implications of the measure. Because in such participatory processes, you have people from uh, all different backgrounds and not all working with it. Citizens or um, uh, people from NGOs are doing this job part-time. They have to have information about those measures and this is part of the scientific framework a describing of the measures, GAG emissions, what does it cost, what are co-benefits, what are hurdles and so on. Um, and there are uh, lessons learned. This is a highly productive discussion culture can be achieved and uh, sometimes stakeholders learn 
a lot about each other and uh, are going into discussion processes formally not possible. Um, also, the policy makers there were in the workshop learned things about uh, the stakeholders which they hadn't known before. Um, and probably a higher chance of successful implementation of measures. And this depends on the time frame of the, uh, of the process. You, uh, if you have a long process and you have good measures, then you maybe find some stakeholders who try to implement or help to implement their own measures, which they own uh, contributed. And negative, you need time and you need money and you need resources not only from the people who are working on it, but also from the people who are contributing. They uh, have to have, has to have the time. And uh, we do, and you will find them, I think, everywhere, stakeholders opposed to climate action, who fear climate ch uh, change measures, who want to um, uh, stay, stay in the world from today, because they earn money with it. And they try to break up this process, and you have to be ready to structure the process that is not breakable. And that's not, not always easy. Thanks.